simple fly, very few materials. It is small. Um, some people get intimidated by small. Don't let it bother you. Just do it slowly. Take your time. Um, pay close attention to proportions. I've spelled it out quite close, uh, quite clearly. If there's something you don't understand, pull me over before you proceed, okay? Because sometimes terminology and whatnot can be a little confusing if you're new to it. Um, we're going to be tying a caddis pattern. It's called a fluttering miller caddis. These caddis hatch out throughout the West, um, not real abundantly, but when they do hatch out, pretty much that's what the fish want. They'll pretty much ignore anything else that you might put out there. Um, so, to have a few in your box is important. Um, my husband and I ran into this hatch on several days on the fire hole in Yellowstone National Park this summer in uh, the latter part of June. And that's all the fish wanted, period. <laughs> they wouldn't touch anything else. <laughs> and usually in that river, we can offer them several things and they'll kind of readily go for it if they're in the mood to feed. Um, this can be fished dead drift with the current or it can be skittered a little bit on the surface as well. Okie doke. Um, we're gonna be using a size 18 hook tonight. It's a standard dry fly hook which is a 100 if you're getting the brand name TMC or the fly shop TFS. They number them the same. TFS? The fly shop. The fly shop has their own hooks. Oh, that's oh yeah, right. they have a supplier that they use for yeah, their stuff. Yeah, yeah, and their hooks are, in essence, are just like TMC. Um, they number them identically. Oh, I didn't know that. And they're cheaper. Are they? They're cheaper. <laughs> yes. Good enough. I'll stock up yeah, next time. Yeah, Tampa is about the priciest hook you can get right now. Yeah. Okay, so crimp your barb first. I've told that to everybody. Why haven't I? Is there anybody I haven't given that lecture to? Yeah. And position your hook so you can. Your shank is exposed to get the material on there. I am letting the point stick out a little bit um, just because some of the measurement or one of the measurements has to do with the hook gap, which is from the shank down to the tip. But if I drag my thread across that, it will probably cut my thread. So you can tuck it back in there to be on the safe side. And when it comes time, you can reposition your fly out so you can see what the hook gap actually is. Okie dokie. Only thread tonight, ADOT, which is a fine thread. It is not coarse at all. When tying small little, you know what? Yeah, it's close. Well, the other end is uh, still open. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. My, oh, my, my voice does not carry well at all. I always wanted to be an actress. <laughs> never, would have, never would have made it with the voice. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to attach the thread one fourth the way back on the shank. The shank is the straight part, so you want to kind of eyeball where halfway is and then halfway between that and the um, eye of the hook. That's where you're going to attach your thread, and then you're going to run it back in touching wraps to the rear of the shank. If you hold your tag in like this at a 45 degree angle, it lays the thread right down next to the last wrap very nicely and neatly. It's a nice way to cheat that. And cut your tag end. All righty. Next, we're going to dub the body. We're using uh, super fine dubbing tonight, which is very, very soft stuff. Dubbing is something that frequently baffles people in getting it right. What you want to do is take just what I call a whisper. 
See how little dubbing I've got there on my finger? A whisper. And you're going to put that right up next to the thread, and then you're going to twist it onto it just by rubbing one way. Now I could have I could have gotten a little bit more that time. That was that was really pretty skimpy. <laughs> so we'll put it up there. I say I'm just putting it next to the thread, and then I'm going to push my fingers together only in one way, not back and forth, mm -hmm. but just stroke it one way. That makes the dubbing adhere to the thread very nicely. And I'm going to pull it down to where I need it. And then we're going to wrap a dubbed body. And this will be a skinny body. It will not be tapered. It's going to be like a cigar rather than a taper. Mayflies get tapered bodies. Caddis have very cylindrical bodies. And when you run out, you get a little more. See, not very much, just a little bit, guys. Put it right up next to the thread and twist it on. When I'm doing this, I am my fingers are pushing very, very tightly together. This isn't a soft little thing. This is really firmly together. And we're wrapping this body up to what it says here is one third back on the shank. In other words, you're going to stop a little bit further back than where you started your thread. All right. Now I've got too much on there, so what you do is you pull it off like that and then cut the excess. And now it ends right where it should be. bit of a stub there. I'm going to wrap that down. Okay. Next we're going to do the wing and the head at the same time. We're going to be using um, crinkled Zelon. This is an artificial material. Originally used in rug. Was yeah. it really? Yes. I'll be damned. Using what? It was well, part of the family of Orlon, Nylon, Zelon, Antron, oh, all okay. those ons. <laughs> what makes a difference is how many sides they have. Is that it? Antron is trilobal. If you look at it under a microscope, it's triangular. So it depends on the shape of the fiber, it tells you which one it is, but I don't remember what they all are. <laughs> Come on, I Kathy. Only know Antron. Come on, Kathy, you're our you and but yeah, they're all part of the synthetic DuPont post-war era. <laughs> so is this Antron going to make it float? Oh, yeah. It'll help, uh-huh, sure, with a little floating on it. Yeah, this, this fly will float quite nicely. Um, it's a very light fly. Okay, so we need two pieces of the crinkle Zelon laid on top of one another. <laughs> yeah. Did I say something other? No, no. no. I fine. said Antron. I thought you were, I thought this was Antron. This I didn't is Zelon this time. Okay. So I've got two pieces there. I cut off the ends to even them out just a little bit. Although we will chop it again. All right. So you're going to lay this up here so that it extends. I'll read it exactly. You want the butt ends, this end, to extend beyond the eye about a hook length. Position on top. So the there's ends. the hook length. We want that to extend beyond the eye like that. So I'll lay that up there. It extends beyond the eye from the tie-in point or from the eye? From the eye. So and, this is, and this is about. This is, this is not an exact. We're just trying to get enough out there. We're going to chop this to the right length in a minute. And oh, so, okay. Okay, so that one isn't real exact. Now I'm wrapping the thread forward toward the eye of the hook until I am one eye length back from the eye. So you have the eye hanging down, then you have one eye length right there. And that's where the last wrap of thread goes. Is that clear to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're going to trim the 
believe. Okay, we're gonna trim the head to the length. Oh, God. I whited it out and didn't. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to add that, guys. Trim the head to the length of, I think it was like hook gap. Yeah, about hook gap. Sorry about that. You got a little elk hair head sticking out. Kind of like an elk hair. Huh? It's just like an elk hair. Correct. The hackle goes around it. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. We got to wrap one wrap around the um, the head of thread, which kind of helps bring it stand up there. Okay, so one wrap around the base of the head. Then we'll trim it. And the best way to do this is to bundle it all together, hold it with your left hand, and then cut off the tops. It's best to be conservative. Don't do it as far as you think it needs to be with your first cut. Then you can trim it till you get it the length you want. A little bit at a time will make you very happy in the long run. And if you look at the samples I've got down the table, you'll see about how long to make the head. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. That's about right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to chop the rear end off, making the wing. And the wing, so it extends hook gap beyond the body. Okay, this is where I measure it with the hook gap. So the distance from the tip up to the shank, that's hook gap. You want that length beyond the end of the body. Did I say body? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hook gap beyond the body. Okay. You know what? Yep, that's about right. Okay. Hook gap beyond. The, there's the end of the body. So right about. Once again, do it so that it's too much, and then you can trim it to get it about the right length. That's about right. Okay, okay. All right, once again, you can match it up with my little samples. Actually, I can trim that just a little bit more. Give it a little haircut there. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do the hackle, chicken feather, dyed gray, and you're going to find a fuzzy end and a tip end. We're going to cut the fuzzy end off, and then you're going to stroke the barbs so that they stand out at a right angle down at the base of the feather. This one is just standing out on one side. Well, sometimes on those saddle feathers, they, if they've been curved in your bag, they don't you tr one side won't stick out, it flattens up. Yeah. Okay, well, maddening. <laughs> I was able to get it pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to trim on each side of the stem of the feather, close to it, but it's going to have little projections out the side. I call this making it a crew cut. And I'm going to make, I'm going to cut off maybe three or four or five on each side of the stem. So and you've got the you stem and that? you've got little projections. That way, when you tie it in, the thread grabs between those and you can't pull that feather out. It used to be years ago that fly tires pulled all the barbs off so that the stem was totally exposed. Well, what would happen, you catch a fish and its teeth would catch on it and pull it right out. There goes your fish. So, many years ago, learned this trick. Okay, now there's a right side and a wrong side to a feather. The right side is dark and the wrong side is pale. The right side is smooth, the inside is not as smooth. You're not going to be able to see that smoothness on this feather, but you certainly can see the dark side and the light side. Put the light side towards you, place the crew cut part right up where those thread wraps are, and then wrap back to the wing. Now see, I can't pull that, whoops, 
<laughs> well, you just got a little more oomph than you thought you did. We'll do that again. I lied. I lied badly. We'll make it the wraps a little tighter. Okay, now it stays. <laughs> All right. Now, I've wrapped the thread back to the wing. Now I'm going to wrap the thread forward to the head. So it's a little. And now you're going to take your hackle. Now, maybe, I think it's long enough now that I don't have to put the hackle pliers on, but by the time you get to your third fly, you're probably going to have to put hackle pliers on to uh, bring it around. Well, I'll do it right now. Okay, so we're going to make maybe about four or five wraps, slowly working my way forward. Okay, then bring your material to the top, wrap your thread behind the feather three times. And then take your scissors, open them just a little bit, put them in there and push to cut it. If I went in there and chopped, I'd probably be chopping some of my uh, barbs off of my feather, and I don't want to do that. Then you half hitch. Um, to make the knot, and the knot is formed underneath the head on top of the hook eye, so right underneath there. Give it three or four half hitches. I love this, it's nice and small. Most of you will probably have one that's this big, but that works as well. You don't like the Mattarelli anymore? But with this sticking out in the front, it doesn't, the Mattarelli kind of catches all the material. You have to do it sideways. Yeah. Uh -huh. It'll it'll or or pull it it, it'll work, but it's yeah. easier to do the half hitch. Once again, open your scissors a little bit, put it in there, and push, and that cuts the thread, and that's the fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay so sit down. I'll come around and help all of you guys. Oh, See, that was painless. I did forget all about